Captain Ross Robertson with Big Water Fishing. You know, you hopefully have seen our videos, shenanigans, podcasts, whatever it may be. Well, here's what we're doing now, if you haven't seen, a project boat. Why would I buy a 20 year old boat? I have no idea. But we really wanted to have a little tiller boat. They're kind of a cult like following. They didn't make them that long. The Ranger 618. We took this just absolutely destroyed, tore up, hit, whatever you want to call it, smashed up boat. And we rebuilt this thing from top to bottom. Hard to believe we are in part 13 of a project boat yet. Here we are, lucky 13. This is gonna be the last kind of full regular episode. And then we're gonna roll into a pretty all encompassing close for you guys. But on part 13 here, what we're gonna show you is kind of some simple but important fixes on the console, kind of the control panel, the fittings, and then some of the inside glass work that we did without really doing glass work. So some really simple tips and tricks in there as well as some tasks that are really important to kind of fixing up an old boat new boat or anything that's broke. So we're at the kind of the console, if you will, we've got the panel with all the gauges on it and the holes got stripped out over time or whatever. And the guy had some like a drywall type fittings there to just kind of take up some gap. We're going to get rid of those because they don't sit flush with it. They look kind of crappy. So really I'm just going to kind of break these things out, pop them out from behind where I can. And then we're going to tape it up around the area and we're going to put some 4200 on there and basically going to refill the holes. So I'm going to tape the back and I'm going to fill the holes with that 4200 so that I can basically let that harden up. We're using the fast cure. Um, you know, you could use 5200, but that's really, really permanent. So this is basically 4200. So what we're going to do is we're going to fill that hole and then I can re-drill that and then use the regular screws that it was intended for so it won't be sloppy and look real nice and flush. You want to make sure you tape the area off pretty good because once this stuff gets on things, even your hands, it's not real good at coming off. So I'm going to try a little plastic razor blade here to kind of smooth this over so it's a little smoother and kind of, kind of try to force more of that material in the hole itself. And then just get rid of that material so that it makes sure it sits nice and flush when we're done. Works real good. You know, kind of like the Wave Whackers, the little console gauge pad, if you will, really just kind of sanded it down a little bit. I didn't spend a lot of time at it and repainted it, made it look a lot better. It's definitely not perfect. But the big thing here is we took the gauges out, or at least the majority of them, and most of them were really, really bad. When you look at there, I mean, green on the connections, we had one wire pull out. So basically taking these all apart, and what I'm gonna do is I found a little online here. We found some, can't find them, but found them. Some little pipe cleaners. And then we've got some electronic uh, cleaner, connection cleaner, no big deal. And trying to get some of those fittings on the things that I really don't want to completely redo, get those uh, changed out, cleaned up a little bit. But then on things like the little Ranger pad here, these are hard to come by. I don't think you could find one of these if your life depended on it. I'm basically going to just replace that connection. We're going to get rid of that so I can get everything redone instead of trying to clean those up because this is super important. You know, I've got my, my lights on here, my nav lights. I've got my bilge pumps, my lab wall pumps. So if this goes out, we've got a lot more than just one problem. And I've got, you know, some new connections, some new fittings that I bought online. These are a little waterproof deal. We're going to put some dielectric grease inside there before we put them together so we don't have that corrosion problem, hopefully. And just they're 20 years newer. So the same thing that I did with my pumps here. You saw Captain Chris, he was putting some of those, those pumps together with new fittings. So everything is quick release. So this is just the extra cartridge that I'm gonna carry that I could use for my bilge pumps or my live well pumps. And they're all wired with the exact same fitting. And so we're gonna do the same thing with some of the electrical connections here to make sure we don't have any problems. So here's the fitting for my little Ranger pad. And I've got the little ends crimped on there and there's basically a male and a female. and You have to put the, the right one to the right deal. So we're gonna put this one here and all four of these go in. Then we've got this little boot there that that's gonna butt up against there to help keep the water out. And then after we're done, just before we put this together, we're gonna put a little dielectric grease in each one of these to keep it uh, from corroding like the old one was. And we're gonna have a nice watertight fit on this connecting harness, but yet we can disconnect it if we had to do some service or something happened to it. So we're securing the little Ranger panel here that's gonna run pretty much everything on the boat all the important stuff, the live wells, the bilge pumps, the nav lights, things like that. So I got that secured back in here. We made this little harness connection. And what we're gonna do next is, I'm gonna, before I close this up, I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease in each one of the female fittings. 
anytime you take these apart, that's always the one that's tough to get cleaned and it's tough to kind of get access to. So we're gonna put a bunch of this in each individual one. Don't get too crazy. You don't wanna kind of cross contaminate, but we're gonna do that before we put the whole panel back together. So one of the things that I did before I tore this even apart, one of the first things I did was I put a label maker on there on each individual thing, which is a good idea, not only for just working on this panel, but if you're to disconnect it at any point in time or anybody's working on the boat, it's just gonna save a lot of time. There's no bad way, you know, if let's say one thing goes out and you're in the water, you quickly know which one is. So one other little trick I like to do, pretty much when I'm taking anything apart is I like to take some pictures on the phone. And that way I can make sure if the labels come off or in a couple of cases where the wires could go either way, that I've got a couple different options on there and got a backup plan because labels come off and you forget. I took the drywall plugs that they had in there because these screws had kind of become blown out. So I removed that and then we put some 4200 in there and let that sit up for a few days. And then basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pre-drill some little holes in that stuff. So it's kind of a rubbery compound, but it's gonna take up that gap so that we don't have any slop with the small little screws that we're gonna put in. So we drilled, we drilled this with very small uh, drill bit and we're using a small number eight uh, screw because we can always go bigger in case this for some reason loosens up and then we're just going to put these in by hand so we don't tear up that you can see it's pretty firm it's sucking it right in there i mean we don't have them all in it's very solid so simple little thing just takes a minute or two it'll make it look a whole lot nicer you won't have that gap in there it can be nice and tight sometimes these projects don't require that much time or money just a little bit of know-how so now we've got it all attached. I left out the speedometer because I don't plan on using that. I'm going to use the speed over ground on the hummingbirds. Uh, but everything works kind of nice. We've got this all shut off. Watch the electronics section of that to show you how we got this all shut off to a switch. But a lot cleaner, a lot nicer. And again, I left this out because we're going to put in a Mercury uh, smart craft gauge in there. It's going to give us a lot of good information. But just a couple bucks and a little bit of time, we got that thing looking like new. You know, you don't have to have a new boat or even an old boat, it doesn't really matter what it is to know that fuel problems can be a thing, even in little gas blowers, anything that takes gas pretty much, right? And so a lot of what people don't realize is that ethanol or bad gas can eat those lines from the inside, cause them to collapse. You have really a fuel flow issue as well as getting, you know, things into the system itself. So. We only had a few feet of gas line, maybe five or six tops. And once we had things torn apart, it was just a no brainer to tear that out, put a new gas line in. It's a very simple fix and very inexpensive. It's probably just a little more of a headache for getting things cleaned up. But even if it looks good on the outside, that doesn't mean it's good on the inside. And it's a simple fix we'd highly recommend. You know, I love the fiberglass boat. I've been with Ranger a long time and really appreciate those nice compartments, especially that white fiberglass. You can see things really nice, but the one thing people tend to do is they throw sinkers in there, metal rod holders, whatever it may be, and it's going to chip the heck out of stuff in there. And then we definitely had that in the live well and a couple of the compartments that had finished stuff. And instead of taking that time, you know, to, to do real glass work with it, we basically just did a little bit of sanding, made sure we had no real damage in there, let that dry out real good. And then we just simply put some 4200 in there some um, and 5200 so the, the quick setting stuff and that's really nice because it's waterproof and it's it's kind of a past job to be honest but all the places that we we're at it would really be involved to do glass work and it just didn't really make sense and so we wanted to make sure we didn't have any further deterioration in there but yeah I had it cleaned up and in a white on white you can't even hardly tell it's there and it's a simple fix that takes just a little bit of time just make sure you allow enough time for that to cure because products like 4200 and 5200 even the quick setting they require a lot longer to cure than you might think so on these older boats you know you're gonna chips and dings it's just a reality and again, I'm not a fancy fiberglass guy, so a simple way of fixing that, make sure you seal it up, especially in the compartments or the libel like we're gonna do here, both the front and the rear libel have dings in them. People must put some metal stuff in them or whatever. But something similar to this, this is 3M uh, 5200, which is a watertight seal. This stuff is nasty. Make sure you use gloves. Once it gets on something, it stays there. And the fast cure, you really wanna do that because that only takes a few days. It takes about two weeks with the full strength stuff. So. Any of those little gouges where you get the fiberglass, especially around the drain plugs or really anywhere, um, they make this in black too, it's kind of harder to find, but you can kind of cheat and get some little things so you don't have to do glass work, it'll be a lot faster and just kind of covering stuff up. We appreciate you guys sticking with us, hard to believe through 13 episodes of the Project Boat. So we are basically now kind of concluding it 
for now. Maybe that's a little tease if you pay attention to the big water channel stuff. But we're gonna do uh, the following week here, we're gonna have a closing video, okay? So we're gonna show you top to bottom, pretty extensive stuff, some of the little things that we didn't show, and then recapping some things even in greater depth. But make sure you stay tuned to the Big Water Podcast, our videos, all that good stuff, bigwaterfishing.com. You guys know where it's at, Instagram, Facebook. We're out.